Hello everybody, my name is Justine and I'm the Equality, Diversity, Inclusion Manager and this week is National Inclusion Week and I'm joined today by Linda Barkas from uh, Faculty of Business Law and Tourism and she's a Senior Lecturer in Business Management. Hi Linda, would you like to introduce yourself to everybody? Oh, hello everybody. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity uh, to talk with you. Um, I've worked in higher education for a long time and previously have a, a business background. I'd just like to share with you a um, few things about a disability I have. I had a serious accident when I was a young person, not that long ago, um, and it's left me hearing impaired. That means I have, um, I don't need a dog yet, but I have less than 1% hearing in both ears. So I'll show you, I've got these wonderful equipment that the university very kindly bought that talk, that has a little mini computer on the back of my hearing aids and they all talk together. So it's absolutely fantastic and works really well with our move to online. However, there's a few things that might be worth sharing to make life a little bit easier for everyone. That would be great, Linda. So what, what we wanted to perhaps do is share how we can make uh, particularly virtual meetings more inclusive, particularly for people who are hearing impaired. So could you give people some hints and tips on what is useful to make it feel more inclusive for you? Oh, certainly that's wonderful. Um, I still lip read, even though this fantastic equipment picks up sound. The computer technology on the hearing support equipment has advanced a lot and it does screen out background sound to a certain extent. Hearing impairment is not volume that you, you can't hear any deaf or partially deaf person, it's sort of frequencies. So there are certain words that you can't hear like P and B, you can't tell the difference. So you're phrasing when you're listening to someone, you are lip reading and you're actually phrasing. So you're working out what the person is saying. So obviously that's heavy concentration. The advantage I have is I have long periods that I can concentrate more than probably the average person because you have to, to be able to survive. But what you can't do is take your eye off the screen um, and write something because then you miss something vital if it hasn't been picked up by the um, microphone to your computer on your hearing aids. So it's the the best presentations are the ones where the chair of the meeting controls it. So there's only one person at a time on screen and everyone else's image and microphone is muted. It doesn't matter for informal meetings, but anything critical, we did an academic board, for example, and um, vice chancellor and his colleagues were marvelous at, at following that pattern and also screen captions. The disadvantage of screen captions, if you take your eye off the speaker, you're looking across at the caption. So it's a swings and roundabouts. This, so it's very useful to have one person on the screen speaking at any um, given time. The second really helpful thing is um, careful, controlled use of the chat. So the best speakers, including the vice chancellor being one of them, he controlled the chat so that when he said, have you any questions, we had a slight pause while people put their hand up or use the chat. Where it goes wrong uh, and is hard to follow for someone like myself is if the chat is going all the time and people are putting their hands up all the time because you don't quite understand where the conversation is going. Um, so they're the main tips really. And I think they're useful for, for anyone. So just to recap, one person on the screen at any one time lots and lots of pauses and lots and lots of mini breaks because um, you know concentrating 100% is difficult for anyone but, but um, particularly difficult if you've got a, a vision or a hearing issue you know where you where it's Murphy's law the batteries go <laughs> you get a little song in you think that you're running out of energy but you, so you need a few seconds sometimes to change the battery. 
the hearing impaired equipment needs charging up every six hours and and sometimes long you know quicker if if they're all on at the same time um but i think that's about uh, about it really you know if, if those little things are followed it makes life a lot easier that's brilliant, Linda. That's uh, really helpful. And some other tips that I've learned generally about um, inclusive meetings, ju not just for those that have a hearing impairment, are to think about things like providing information in advance of the meeting. So those that need a little bit more time to be able to absorb information can see it in advance. Um, as you said, the use of the control, um, the control of the use of the hands, hands up, so everybody isn't talking all over each other. Um, and also, um, if you're sharing the screen, um, make sure that you sometimes explain what's in the pictures because that's also really helpful for everybody. And I think last but not least, um, identify yourself before you speak as well. So particularly if there's a lot of people in the group, it means that you can identify who is actually doing the talking as well. And finally, um, there are live captions. I think you uh, referred to those earlier, Linda. If you needed to put on the live captions, you click on the three dots on the Teams meeting and it will give you that option to do it. And hopefully, although we've not checked the technology, I have them on now and they may appear in the video, which uh, would give you a demonstration on them. Thank you very much, Linda. That's been really helpful. Oh, thank you. Bye now.